Hello. How are you? Hi. 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 Captor. Nice Hello. to see you again. Thank you, John. Thank nice you very you. much for coming. Sure. Thanks for having us. All right. Welcome to the 9th District. <laughs> You'll soon become the longest serving woman in the history of Congress. What does that mean to you? Uh, what does that mean to me? Well, first of all, it's a great privilege for the place in America that I represent. The longest serving man from the House was John Dingell of north, just north of the border here in Ohio in Michigan. It's interesting to me that two members of Congress who could not realize their dreams in the Congress as quickly as they wanted stayed and fought and fought and fought for their people. When you reflect over all those years, what are the biggest changes that you've seen or some of the biggest changes? What's happened now is the floor of Congress, rather than being a legitimate institution of debate, has become a theater where people use it to game the media. And things happen on the floor that never would have happened before when you had private debates and people would be taking issues in hand. And we now have people who play to the cameras. When you were elected, uh, there were 23 women, I think, in Congress at the time. Now there are 140 or will be 140. Um, that's still less than 30 percent, though, overall. Do you see that as progress, or are there still a long way to go? So I ran as a person from the working class who happened to be a woman. I didn't run because I was a woman, okay? I am proud of all the women that have run and all of them that I have served with. Um, but... <laughs> The Congress as a whole doesn't necessarily hold my perspective because I come from a different place in America. They're not used to people like us. You've been um, critical of the fact that many of the leaders in the House on, on the Democratic side uh, come from districts that are wealthy, uh, districts that are on the coast, and you've said that um, pe they can't relate to people in the Midwest. How concerned are you that about that and that it will continue. This is a burden I've carried my entire career. It's a problem in both parties because the leadership tends to come from the coasts. And uh, we here in the big middle of the country are not well understood. You've been a long, long time supporter of Ukraine well before the war, um, uh, co-leader of the, uh, the Ukrainian caucus. What do you think the next steps should be for the U.S.? They are teaching, the Ukrainians are teaching my godchildren and the world's children what a real enemy to liberty is. And that it isn't, liberty is not free. We must help arm them. It's in our interest because Russia is known to be the type of country that if she's able to go over a, a sovereign border and take it, she will take the next one. And we will be in a much more major war. Congresswoman, have you given any thought to how long you would still like to stay in office? I have not given much thought to that because frankly, it's gone in a flash. We have been so busy and we have so much to show uh, for our efforts. I, I hope God gives me the years to be able to deliver more to the good people who put their faith in me. Congressman, thank you very much for, for joining us, taking time to, to do this. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Very good questions. Thank you so much for your time and for, for being with us today.